So today we're gonna cover murderous Gwyn Hawks. Uh, welcome back, everyone who watched the first episode in this series. This is episode number two of the How to Hunt series, and today we are gonna cover Gwyn Hawks. Um, just before going forward, the base Gwyn Hawk stats are they have 45 health. They have 75 base elemental resistance, or 450 health, sorry, not 45. 75 base elemental resistance because they are a small machine and they have 75 base for their elemental resistance. Um, the Glint Hawk, various weak points. There we go. The beak is a 1.5 damage multiplier. The sack is also a damage one, is also a 1.5 damage multiplier. But if you destroy the sack, which is just like, I think it's like 125, 150 damage, uh, you will cause the Glint Hawk to freeze, and then the frozen Glint Hawk will take two times and three times damage, depending on where you shoot it. You shoot it. If you shoot a weak point, it'll take two times damage. If you shoot its body, it'll take three times damage. And the eyes, as per usual, are a two times multiplier. Is not true for every machine, but it is true for this one. Um, the Glint Hawks are weak to fire, so that is a very useful way of downing them, of defeating them, of doing damage to them, of crowd controlling them. They are strong against freeze, I believe. If I remember correctly, I believe they are strong against freeze. Generally, if a machine has some sort of element to it, like a, that type of sack, it's, it's strong to that element, but you can still inflict the machine with that element by popping the sack. Uh, if you really want to cater specific armor to defend yourself against Glint Hawks, I would recommend uh, players get armor with high freeze and high melee resistance. The Glint Hawks really only do three different types of attacks. They have their swoop down melee attack, and they'll do that from various different angles. It's their claw attack, and then they have their kind of carpet bomb freeze attack, and then they have a ranged freeze attack where they shoot at players single shot. So carpet bomb, shooting freeze, and then single freeze, and then charge from below. Swoop down, claw, charge, charge from above is, uh, is their various attacks. We'll go into how to avoid those right meow. Okay, so that's the carpet bomb attack. So usually you can see this attack coming, uh, coming towards you, or you can hear it. And generally, they're gonna wanna go along the line of where Aloy's standing, so you can just turn sideways, roll sideways, and avoid them. Um, the claw attack, where they swoop down and attack the player, that attack, you generally, if they're coming at you, you can roll towards them, and that'll generally let you be able to avoid them. Um, with their swoop down attack, like the exclamation point pops up just before they they come down and swing so that's a that's a good sign of when you need to dodge and get out of the way too take a multiple generally it's gotta watch your target gotta watch your target one thing to to help you avoid their uh, their freeze shots is because enemies anticipate where you're going, they'll predict your movement and shoot ahead of where you're going. You want to move somewhat erratically when machines are attacking you like that. So if the Glint Hawk is shooting at me and I'm running this way, it's just going to hit right there. If I'm rolling, it's going to predict where I'm going. So you do little erratic movements so they can't quite predict where you're going. So their base elemental resistance is 75, and then they're weak to fire, so it takes about 37.5 fire to burn them, to get them down. So this is a fire arrow with 38. 
only does 38 fire. And with this, you can down a Glinthawk. That's all you need. That's all you need on your bow. 38 fire, and you can send a Glinthawk to the ground if you make contact. Which I did not right there. Oop, or right there. there we go. So, we have all these Glinthawks here. And we don't want to fight them all at once. So what we can do is we can just light them all on fire. Oops. Missed there. Light them all on fire. Just light all the Glenhawks on fire. And then after that, as they come out of fire, you just reapply the fire. And it'll just bring them right back down. Okay, he's running low. He's dead now already. He's running low. And he's dead now already. And you can just totally chain CC Glint Hawks by just lighting them all on fire. All on fire sequentially. But chain CCing with fire is definitely the easiest, and in my opinion, one of the better ways for newer players or players that aren't super familiar with the game to, to handle Glint Hawks. Because you don't you don't have to worry so much about doing too much damage to them or crowd controlling them that much because when you light them on fire you're already crowd controlling them a little bit so let's get them all let's get them all attacking this is four glint hawks they all want the aloy oh three glint hawks this guy hey come party dude That was a weird charge. And they're all up, and then you just chain CC. Whoop. Hit them all with fire, oh, or miss, that works too. Hit them all with fire, you only need 38. You only need 38 fire to light them on fire. But you see, by the time, by the time they get up, you can basically just move on to the last one. So you can keep them all... You can keep them all stunned. You can keep them all busy. Just with fire. They're all doing nothing now. Nothing. We need about 38 fire. Technically it's 37.5. If we're being technical. But the game likes to round the numbers up and down, so... I actually had it showing 38 earlier, or yesterday when I was testing it, and it wasn't quite enough to, uh, to burn them. So, also, the reason why I think the rope caster is kind of worthless for Glenhawks, because it's like... So I can do this... Okay and I can CC him, or I can do that, which is damage and crowd control. So now it's taking damage. Splint Hawk's taking damage, and it's crowd control, rather than just crowd control. Oh, that hit, I believe, some armor, so it didn't quite light it. Sometimes, um, sometimes they don't quite light, even when you hit them with enough. The rope caster does keep the glint hawk down for way longer than fire will. But this this glint hawk could have been lit on fire and it would have effectively been the same thing. But as you just keep lighting them on fire to get them to get them to uh, to fall, they'll start taking damage and yeah, rope caster is uh, not the most useful in my opinion. And through the course of this series, people will come to understand why I feel that way. Chain CC and Glint Hawks with fire is just truly, truly the best way, in my opinion. I have my fire bow set up on ultra hard so that it has enough fire and damage to kill a sawtooth in three fire arrows. And that's roughly around plus 120 damage, plus 120 fire. 
Uh, in order to kill a glint hawk with three fire arrows on ultra hard, you need at least plus 109 fire or damage and plus 110 damage or fire from coils on your fire bow or on a fire weapon. And then that will be enough to, uh, let's find one we haven't hit yet. This guy. This guy is a prime target. And that'll be enough if all three arrows hit to kill a glint hawk in three arrows. Three fire arrows on ultra hard. And this bow is technically set up to do a sawtooth, so this is a little overkill. But... So some, three arrows, full health glint hawk, did ultra hard. And 109 or 110 fire and 109 or 110 damage. But you need either fire or damage needs to be 109. And either fire or damage needs to be 110. Plus 109, plus 110. That's that's the sweet spot for being able to kill glint hawks with three fire arrows on ultra hard. A good way to kill glint hawks on own in one shot is yield. Yield Ice Rail. Yield Ice Cannon. It's fantastic. You just need 450 damage. So if you hit the body of the Glint Hawk with three arrows that can do 450 damage, you can kill a Glint Hawk quickly that way too. The difference between using a rope caster and a fire arrow in this fight is basically just you wasting resources and not doing damage. Which is what I say the rope caster effectively is most of the time. And another thing about that, too, is so you're already aiming at the glint hawk with the rope caster. What's the difference between aiming with the rope and aiming with one arrow? Well, just ammo, right? You gotta hit him with the rope versus you gotta hit him with an arrow. Now, this one was gonna be short, to be honest, because there's not really much for me to say about glint hawks other than burn them. Burn them, dodge. Their their uh, their attacks are relatively easy to dodge, though. I went over that a little bit earlier, but you know they only have three attacks: swoop down at you, a barrage, a straight line of freeze, single shot freeze, and swoop. That's it. That's the three attacks that Glen Hawks have. Not gonna say Terror Blaster is not a terrible option for Glint Hawks, but the problem with Glint Hawks is fire is so good and so easy against them because they are a small machine, and because it only takes 37.5, we'll call it 38, fire in order to light them on fire, that I don't think it's worth the resources to use something like Terror Blast arrows on them. But I mean, you can open up with Terror Blast arrows. All three. Open up on them. Explode the chest off. And then if you want to pop the chest, whoop, you can pop the chest. It works. It works. But I feel it's just more resource efficient to just use fire. Blaze is cheap. Blaze is all over the place. Metal vessels, wire. These aren't as, uh, these aren't as cheap of materials to use. Which is why I I just like to use the fire against the Glint Hawks. Terror Blaster 2, uh, like, most of what you're doing is just getting rid of the armor. But you don't really need to worry about the armor with these guys if you're lighting them on fire, because they're falling down anyway. You got a dead to rights. Once you can get it on the ground, you got it dead to rights. You hit it with a bomb, melee it to death, it doesn't matter. Once that glint hawk is down, once that flying prey is down, their advantage is gone. No more advantage. There's not really much for me to say about glint hawks other than burn them. Burn them, dodge but you know, they only have three attacks. Swoop down at you, a barrage, a straight line of freeze, single shot freeze, and swoop. That's it. That's the three attacks that Glint Hawks have. That's not close enough. I was gonna try to show 
being engaged with other machines and then like random glint hawks and how annoying that can be. Oh, here we go. If they don't run away. Okay, yeah. so the grazers are coming at me and then the glint hawks coming at me. This is definitely when it can get annoying. When you got glint hawks and all the ground targets to track. Just dodge around, but then, like, you know, just burn it. And especially if you're near other machines like this, like, Glint Hawk down, pop a Grazer canister, explode the Glint Hawk even more. If it'll hit. Are you gonna hit him? Yeah. But yeah, the moral of the story for Glint Hawks is you burn them, you get them on the ground, and then you have them dead to rights. That is effectively the TLDR of how how to hunt Glint Hawks. You just burn them. Burn them or deal damage to a non-armored spot that's enough to one-shot them. Like with the uh, like with the ice cannon. These guys really don't have a lot of attacks, though. They're, they're so simple, but so annoying, basically, is, is the Glint Hawk. So simple, but so annoying. And the way that they're covered in armor is very frustrating. Because they don't actually have a ton of armor, but because of how they move and the angles that you get on them, it may seem like they have more armor than they actually do. They don't have a lot of uh, square surface area of armor. Their movements are just very good at displaying their armor. Except for when they're hovering above like that. That's, that's prime time. That guy was anticipating I was going to roll forward. Okay, so it's shooting. But we stutter, we go into random directions while they're shooting, and then they won't. Can't predict, can't hit us. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope something was learned. This video was pieced together using clips from a live stream on the Horizon Speedrun Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash horizon speedrun. Be sure to drop a follow. I don't stream super often anymore, but you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash ipsycho for future Horizon streams and analysis. Links to both Twitch channels, as well as a public Horizon Discord some friends and I started will be posted below. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Take care.